Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. A, Jimi Hendrix was 50 years ahead of his time. B, this is America today. A discordant star-spangled banner because we have a retrovirus in the White House. Welcome to the Savage Nation program. And, of course, being the anniversary of 9-11, it's going to be a special program, which I'm not going to introduce right now. You just know it's going to be unique, and we'll get to it as we get to it. But being an artist rather than just a reader of uh, websites, I want to go back in time with you for a minute. And I want to tell you that, you know, we keep hearing the 60s were bad, the hippie movement destroyed America. But I want to say to you that the 60s weren't all bad. You see, I was watching home movies from the 1960s this morning. I finally collected all of my 8mm. Anyone out there know what I'm talking about? 8mm, super 8mm home movies. I've had them collected in a couple of boxes for years, hundreds of them, hundreds of them, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. From the years that I was in New York, young teacher, young social worker, leaving for Hawaii as a young graduate student. I was supposed to only go there for a year to earn a master's degree and come back and then teach in some upstate New York high school, collect rocks and and drop dead at 50 from boredom. But uh, as life had it, some things happened along the way on the road that sent me in other directions. And as I was watching these 60s home movies, seeing my my little dog Woody, who uh, was killed in front of my eyes in Queens and Forest Hills when I he was uh, we were, I was walking him and. Uh, uh, Dalmatian was released off a leash, ran across the street, bit Woody right around the back, crushed his rib cage, punctured his lungs. I couldn't even reach down and stop it. All I had was a dead animal in my hands. So I rushed him uh, in the little Volkswagen. I had seen pictures of my little green Volkswagen Beetle. Rushed over the bridge with my friend, got to a vet hospital, VA, uh, veteran, uh, veterinarian hospital. And uh, they pronounced the dog dead and gave me a bill for $75. I was very <laughs> young. I had almost no money. I was so outraged. Why would they charge me when the dog was dead, I thought. Anyways, I saw the Woody. I saw the car. I saw the this. I saw the that. And as watching these movies from the 60s, I saw my father. All of the characters from those of you who've come to love my book, such as, uh, I don't remember the title, Psychological Nudity, uh, Train Tracks. All those stories of my childhood. I can't believe it when you look at your father, your mother, your aunts, your uncles, and their friends, and you yourself in your 20s, and they're all dead. And what it does to your brain. You start thinking in a different way, you know what I'm saying? Memories are one thing, movies are quite another. So I'm watching these movies because I finally collected all of my home movies, hundreds and hundreds of them. It it took me years to finally find the person who I trusted to put them all together, and I got 10 discs back to just this morning, an hour, two hours before the show, 10 discs or seven discs of like basically my life. I'm creating this little thing for the, for the family, the children, whatever I'm going to do with it, I don't know yet. And I started to think about this. Very important you listen to me if you're a follower of the show, because this is very political. I saw myself as a very straight, young social worker, teacher, And then suddenly the movie jumps to 1968 and I have a beard. I have long hair. I look like Charles Manson. And the last scene of the movie is me as a free spirit on the roof of a hospital in Hawaii, a research hospital I was working in as a grad student, moving freely on this roof with the horizon behind me and the ocean behind me with my young wife and my friend Prasad, a Hindu friend of mine who explained the Hindu worldview to me. I saw myself up on that rooftop And I had to make a note that the 60s weren't all bad. I realized what it was like to go from being a rigid spirit to a free spirit, free spirit. And then, you know, we keep hearing people say, oh, the hippies ruined America. Not so fast. I will tell you exactly what happened. It wasn't the hippies who ruined America. It was the communists who ruined the hippies who ruined America. The very same viruses who are destroying this country today 
are those who penetrated the free spirits of that time. And the reason it happened, and I observed this today, and I thought it was one of my best observations of all time, is that a free spirit is more easily manipulated or penetrated than a rigid spirit. You see, the 60s were not all bad. It enabled millions of us, including many of my listeners, to become free of spirits. The communists entered our spirits just as retroviruses infect humans, causing the common cold and AIDS, for example. And today we have a retrovirus in the White House named Barack Obama. He has infected the body politic with his hateful, anti-American views and invaded many other cells or people with his nation-destructive ideas. A retrovirus is a very, very fascinating organism. It's a virus that uses RNA, ribonucleic acid, as its genetic material. Now, most of our cells are made up of DNA. And when a retrovirus infects a cell, it makes a DNA copy of its own genome. And then, and then it inserts itself into the DNA of the host cell that it invaded. And it starts to trick the cell that it invaded into thinking that that's what it is. And it causes diseases such as some forms of cancer, AIDS, common cold. So what is a retrovirus? It's a type of virus that has RNA instead of DNA as its genetic material, and it uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to become part of the cells that it invades, becoming like the new cell that it invaded, like the cell it invaded. And this then allows many copies of the virus to be made in the host cells. Does that sound like what Obama has done to this country? That's exactly what he's done. The entire Democrat Party has been invaded and infected by him. Not all of them were like this originally. Not all of them were like this even seven years ago. Some of them had a scintilla of patriotism and a scintilla of sanity. Today, the entire Democrat Party has been invaded by the retrovirus called Barack Obama, who has infected them with his worldview that is so crazy, they don't even know what they're doing because they are just like him now. They yak and yak and yak and repeat what he tells them to say to the detriment of the United States. And of course, the same goes for a good portion of the Republican Party. It goes for 99% of the press corps. 99, maybe more percent are also infected by the retrovirus of liberalism or communism, whichever way you want to put it. But again, I don't want you to lose the, the, the theme of my show today because it's not about bashing the retrovirus in the White House. It's too boring to do. Frankly, he's beneath contempt at this point. I don't even want to talk about him. So let me go back to what I was saying and ask you a question. I was watching home movies from the 60s today, and I saw how much I had changed when I left New York in 1968 and moved to Hawaii to work for a graduate degree in pharmacology. It was a time of change in America. The anti-war movement was raging while the war in Vietnam was burning on. I was glad to have left all the hatred of the mainland USA and to discover and develop and free my inner self. And as I said to you, the first disc ended with me and my young wife dancing on the rooftop of a research hospital in Honolulu with my Hindu friend Prasad. Looking at the ocean and the eternal horizon in the back background represented our new freedom and our new lives. But the 60s are the issue today. They were not all bad. It enabled millions of us to become free spirits, free of spirits. But here is the problem. A free spirit is more easily infected or invaded than a rigid spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And now I want to open it up to the audience because I'm going to go on with this theme in a minute. And I'm going to ask you, are you a former hippie who became a conservative? And when did you become a conservative and why? What was the moment that opened your eyes to where you were going? You see, the fundamental problem is that many people of the 60s thought that they were free spirits and they were. They were free spirits. And many of them got stuck. They became like animals that fell into a pit, a tar pit, and they became frozen in time, espousing 60s philosophy to this minute, to this very minute, stuck repeating the same mantras of the 1960s that were put in their heads by the communists of the 1930s who were running the hippie movement of the 1960s. They never evolved. They don't even understand that they have destroyed their own lives in their own country. They have not been able to evolve. And there are millions of people like that. They're all over Hollywood. Otherwise intelligent people stuck in the past 
unable to move on, unable to evolve, unable to see what they are doing to this country, taking their marching orders primarily from Barack Obama. That's how evil and dangerous this retrovirus in the White House is. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. A president is a very powerful man. Powerful not only in what he can do politically, but what he can do mentally. And what this man is doing mentally to America and the world is beyond comprehension. I don't have to list the details. I've done so in one book after another. I don't have to tell you about the insanity of this retrovirus granting the most terroristic state on the uh, nation on the planet, Iran, the right to develop nuclear weapons. It would be like going into an inner city like Baltimore after they burned the city down, and instead of saying, we're going to put you all in jail, instead of doing that, giving them all RPGs and tanks, and then saying they're not going to do any more harm uh, when we give them the RPGs and tanks because they mean well. That's what Obama is doing. Now, you have to say, is he crazy? Is the man out of his mind? Or does he know what he's doing? Is he a secret agent of Iran? Has uh, Iran, is Iran the country that put him in power to begin with? Is Iran that powerful? Do they run this, this thing of ours called our government media complex so much so that we don't even know it? How would we know how deeply this goes? I'm not that good a novelist. I didn't write The Manchurian Candidate. Richard Condon did, one of the greatest novelists of our time. He wrote some other great movies, uh, uh, some great uh, novels, rather. And one of his best novels was something with a mountain in it. And it was about a man, if I recall, who leads an anti, uh, leads a prohibition movement in the 1920s. He's a criminal, a gangster, a member of organized crime. And he sets up a hysteria in America against the dangers uh, of alcohol. And he's one of the leaders of the prohibition movement. He stirs up the Christians, and he gets the Christian ladies screaming against alcohol. And before long, uh, the Volstead Act is passed, and alcohol is banned. And he then makes a fortune in organized crime by selling alcohol illegally because the prices go through the roof. That was also writ written by Richard Condon. And it reminds me very, very much of what games are being played in our country today. Well, I've gone on a little while today on hippies and how the hippie movement was uh, uh, hijacked by the communists. And I happen to know, I know very well, that the reason my audience is different, and you hear it in some of the calls sometimes, is because I have an awful lot of former liberals who awakened to what they were, what they are, what they were doing, and became rather conservative, patriotic, however you want to put it, because they realize what's happening to the country. I have a tremendous audience of people who are politically, they think, on the other side of the aisle, but there's something in my voice, in my delivery, uh, my memories, dreams, and reflections, if you want to put it that way, that resonates with them. And they like me, but they don't like my politics, but they listen anyway. They don't understand where they are politically. They don't understand what happened to them. They don't understand how antiquated their philosophies are. They don't understand how destructive a liberalism actually is. They don't understand it. They truly don't understand it. And so I ask you, were you a hippie in the 60s, or I would say 60s, early 70s, who became conservative? When did you become somewhat conservative? I don't even like the word conservative, by the way. I've always rebelled against the word conservative myself. I don't consider myself a conservative, incidentally, at all. I don't like the term. I think it's used in, in all the wrong ways. I wouldn't even define myself as that. I would say I'm still a free spirit and I don't want the government telling me what to do and I don't want you telling me what to do and I don't want Black Lives Matter telling me what to do and I don't want anyone telling me what to do or what to think. How's that? Does that work for you? Try to define that. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Living through flexing times all over again. I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. To have a maniac, a maniac who's like a retrovirus who has infected his entire party and a good portion of the opposition party uh, in a way that you could never imagine could happen in a free nation. It's hard to believe, but he's so 